Counter Narrative News bringing a new series on Malcolm X and it's very much timed well because it's the start of the holy month of Ramadan so solidarity and assalamu alaikum greetings and Ramzan Kareem and Ramadan Mubarak to all of our Muslim friends whichever level of piousness or not that you are engaged with we wish you a fantastic month and all the best to your community so Malcolm X was born uh, on the May the 19th, 1925, he was born into a Pan-Africanist black radical family. His father was part of the Marcus Garvey UNIA movement. He, um, His family got involved as well in black radical politics, including the Nation of Islam. And as he uh, became a teenager and, and, and um, got into a little bit of trouble and waywardness in his youth and ended up in prison, his family basically... Uh, uh, were writing to him to encourage him to join the Nation of Islam, which he did uh, by the mid-50s. This um, episode is quoting from Marika Sherwood's 2011 published book called Malcolm X Visits Abroad, April 1964 to February 1965. By this time, Malcolm X has basically left the Nation of Islam. And the main important thing about Nation of Islam, sorry, Malcolm X, and the reason why Counter Narrative News is, is presenting this new series, is like all the other figures that and the histories that we talk about similar to them Malcolm X his life is a journey a genesis a development of moving towards more revolutionary liber liberatory um, ethics ideologies and frameworks and alliances etc so he comes from quite a right-wing conservative uh, religious cult really which is not deployed in actual struggle uh, at the black grassroots that's what he comes from he becomes a prominent leader of them he falls out with the leadership and 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 the nation of islam the noi's lack of deployment in the liberation struggle in a context where the liberation struggle is really intensifying um, through the 50s and the 60s so to the quote and, th and this is about malcolm's uh, malcolm x's visit to uh, Mecca and to Egypt as well. So it's uh, chapter two, Mecca, Beirut and Cairo, April to May 1964. Quote, Malcolm's first visit to Egypt, July 1959. In 1959, Elijah Muhammad's interest and support for Muslim diplomats in the USA resulted in an invitation by President Nasser of Egypt to visit the country. The leader of the nation of Islam also wanted to go on Hajj and dispatched Malcolm to make the arrangements. However, when the FBI learned of Elijah Muhammad's intentions, the Department of State withheld his passport. Abdullah Abdul Razak, who worked closely with Malcolm and the Organization of African American Unity, OAAU, wrote, wrote me that Malcolm had departed, quote, with a primary objective of preparing for a way for Mr. Muhammad to make Hajj. Brother Malcolm was welcome to Egypt, where he, where he saw but did not meet Nasser. He told me he met the vice president, Anwar Sadat. He did, however, after his passport was released to make Umrah. This leads one to believe that Malcolm was successful in obtaining recognition as an authentic Muslim. His itinerary took him as far as Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. As one of my notes reads, His Holiness Sheikh Mohammed Harkan, whom, with whom I had tea in 1959 in Jeddah. According to Malcolm, he did not reach Mecca. Reasons for not reaching Mecca are either sickness or reluctance to precede Mr. Muhammad. When Malcolm did meet Nasser, their relationship was such that Malcolm named one of his daughters uh, Gamila after Gamal Nasser. End of that quote uh, from Abdu Abdullah Abdul Razak. Back to the quote from the book. The FBI report kindly sent me by Mr. Abdul Razak relates that a meeting at the St. Nicholas Arena on 26, Malcolm stated that he had just returned from the Far East. He stated... He stated he did not speak with Nasser but saw him. He stated that he was well entertained and squired around due to the fact that he was a Muslim. He became very ill and as a result was not able to go to Mecca. Was it the FBI informant who designated Egypt as being in the Far East? In his autobiography, Malcolm barely mentions the visit, simply saying that on a three-week trip to Africa as Mr. Muhammad's emissary, I went to Egypt, Arabia and to the Sudan, to Nigeria and Ghana. Page 273. I have not been able to find any information on Malcolm's visits to Nigeria and Ghana. 1964. Malcolm, according to his biographer Peter Goldman, on leaving the nation of Islam, remained a religious man, a true believer, cut loose from one system of faith and looking for another. He sought in it. He sought it in true Islam. Omar Usman, a Sudanese college student who had given Malcolm literature published by the Islamic Center in Geneva, advised him to approach Dr. Mahmoud Shawarbi for tuition. 
the director of the Islamic Foundation in New York, Dr. Shawarbi, a professor at the University of Cairo and the author of many books, now also served as a delegate at the United Nations. He was impressed by Malcolm's desire to learn about Islam and agreed to tutor him. After some months, he encouraged Malcolm to make the Hajj. Malcolm's sister, Ella, provided the funds. Abdullah, Abdullah Abdul Razak wrote me that, quote, Whereas the first trip was to authenticate Mr. Muhammad, this trip in April 1964 was in order to obtain a distinction higher than that of Mr. Muhammad. Additionally, whereas Malcolm had established the Muslim mosque before embarking for Hajj, he told me before he left, When I return from his trip, I want an organization formed. Its name is to be the Organization Afro-American Unity. He named the individuals who were to form this organization. He also made it clear that he held me responsible for its formation. It is easy to see that even before he left for Hajj, Malcolm planned to Malcolm pa planned to establish political ties with the African continent through the OAAU with the OAU, Organization for African Unity, as he planned through the Muslim Mosque Inc. to establish religious ties with the Muslims of Africa and the Middle East. Malcolm had nearly three months in which to determine what path to follow as an independent, unfettered individual. His viewpoints, aims, goals and modus operandi modus operandi would have been, and from my viewpoint were, completely different from that of the NOI. The Hajj, April 1964. As Malcolm gives a very full description in his autobiography of his experiences in Cairo, Mecca and Jeddah, what follows is a brief summary. Malcolm tra travelled to Mecca via Frankfurt and Cairo. In Frankfurt on 13th of April 1964, Malcolm and a Cairo-bound Muslim brother went sightseeing and were struck by the cordial hospi hospitality of the people in the shops they visited. Malcolm found Cairo crowded with throngs of people, obviously Muslims from everywhere, bound on pilgrimage, hugging and embracing. They were of all complexions. The whole atmosphere was of warmth and friendliness. The feeling hit me that there really wasn't any colour problem here. The effect was as though I had just stepped out of prison. I spent two happy days sightseeing in Cairo before continuing to Jeddah. Dr. Shawarbi had prepared the letter of recommendation for a visa required by the Saudi Embassy for All Converts. Having presented him with the internal message of Muhammad, a book by Abdurrahman Azam, Dr. Shawarbi gave Malcolm an introduction to the author who was the Secretary General of the Arab League in Saudi Arabia. Azam Pasha was a scholar, was a scholar statesman and recognized author on international affairs. He was in the 1960s a close advisor to Prince Faisal of Saudi Arabia. Dr. Shawarbi also gave Malcolm the telephone numbers of his own son in Cairo and that of Umar Azam, Dr. Azam's son in Jeddah. Though these contact, through these contacts, Malcolm was mentioned to Prince, Crown Prince Faisal, who announced that he was an honoured guest of the government. Malcolm was also introduced to visiting African politicians and senior government officials. Mecca and the Muslims he met on his trip led, to, led Malcolm to rethink his attitudes. He now realized that, quote, white man, as commonly used, means complexion only secondarily, primar primarily it descri described attitudes and actions. In the Muslim world, I had seen that men with white complexions were more generally brotherly than anyone else had ever been. The color blindness of the Muslim world's religious society and the color blindness of the Muslim world's human, human society these two influences had each day been making a greater impact and an increasing persuasion against my previous way of thinking. Malcolm arranged for public sorry, two, Mecca, Beirut and Cairo, April, May 1964. Malcolm arranged for wide publicity in the USA for his radically altered views. His letters recounting his experiences were published and in these, he admitted that you may be shocked by these words coming from me, but I have always been a man who tries to face facts and accept the reality of life as new experiences and knowledge unfold. These words, together with other excerpts, reached not only the black press, but were also quoted in the Socialist Workers' Party's The Militant on 25th of May 1964. Meeting many Africans on the Hajj also led Malcolm to realize that the single worst mistake of the American black organizations and their leaders is that they have failed to establish direct brotherhood lines of communication between the independent nations of Africa and the American black people. End of quote from the book. So that's a really interesting moment. Uh, I mean, it's pivotal, frankly, in, in Malcolm's life. He's an independent leader visiting Af uh, uh, Egypt, Africa, and part of the Arab world and, and uh, Saudi Arabia as well. He went, he went previously in 1959 as uh, Elijah Muhammad, the leader of the, 
of the cult of the nation of Islam. He went there as his junior and he didn't want to overshadow him in, in, in what he was doing uh, over there. But then so his, his, his visit after leaving the nation of Islam uh, in 1964 is interesting because he's constantly reflecting about white supremacy and racism and comparatively he's correct uh, relations with uh, very light complexion Muslims be it North Africans or Middle Easterns or further afield in the Caucasus or the um, Central Asian or European regions well the, the interaction of Muslims in Cairo and in Jeddah will be of course especially at this time of revolutionary fervor and the unifying movements of the oppressed will be relatively much more healthier uh, human relations than that that exists in the United States and also Malcolm X is correct that more should have more should have been done and and was was done up to that point of reaching out to anti-colonial movements across Africa and the Middle East as well by black organizations in USA but it has to be said at the same time many scholars have argued and I think there's some uh, substance to this that the nation of Islam founded by uh, or led by Elijah Muhammad uh, uh, initially started by uh, someone else called uh, Wallace Fard but Elijah Muhammad's nation of Islam was very much tied to Gamal Abdel Nasser's leadership in Egypt as a leader of the third world and Africa and the Muslim world and the and the Arab world and uh, scholars have actually suggested that that nation of Islam of Elijah Muhammad was like a proxy of uh, Gamal Abdel Nasser and perhaps uh, Louis Farrakhan who re-establishes Nation, Nation of Islam after Malcolm's uh, death also similarly kind of played uh, like the Elijah Muhammad to Nasser in the sense of getting the funding from Muammar Gaddafi to Louis Farrakhan to re-establish the Nation of Islam. That's not to say that uh, one is uncritically promoting Farrakhan and Nation of Islam. That's not correct at all because like Elijah Muhammad uh, Farrakhan Nation Islam is very much a right-wing conservative movement that collaborates with other far-right and right-wing forces which is totally counter-opposite to the interests of the black liberation and working-class struggle in general um, as it stands. But back to Malcolm X, uh, this is a really important uh, moment where he's He's, he's, he's meeting with, with, with kind of contending political forces. On the one hand, he's hosted by Prince Faisal in Saudi Arabia, who's a very close strategic uh, asset of British and US colonialism in the region. And then he's, he's also under the patronage politically of Gamal Abdel Nasser, who is the, who is the absolute kind of um, counter leader struggler. Uh, of a socialist direction of anti-colonial pan-Arabism, pan-Africanism, pan-third worldism. Uh, um, as well so but at this moment it's clear that Malcolm X is very much oriented towards the more radical wing of the global struggle once again we wish everyone all the best for Ramadan and we will definitely continue adding more to this uh, series on Malcolm X because he is an absolutely leadingly important figure for us to understand and engage with